troubled, and fear fell upon him. Well, yeah, he would be troubled because he would know this, that he was the only one that was supposed to be in there, and if anybody else was in there that wasn't supposed to be in there, they wouldn't be in there very long, okay? Uh, God would deal with that, but now here is this fellow here, the angel of the Lord, and I don't know what he looked like, but my guess is that Gabriel was kind of an awesome looking character. And fear fell upon him, but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Now you got to think, place yourself in his position. What if you were a guy up in your 80s, and all of a sudden, this fellow is there, and he said, Your prayer's been heard, and uh, you're going to have a son. And Zacharias got to be thinking, I finally get my chance to... to burn incense here in my course, and this happens, okay? Uh, and then, but, the, but then he, Elizabeth shall bury thee a son, and shall call his name John. Well, that was another thing, because it was the custom to always call the son after the father. In other words, mm -hmm. his name would be, I would say, something bar Zacharias, or Ben Zacharias, okay? And so, here now, that was something else that was not the way it was supposed to be. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, as many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Now, there's only two in the entire Bible, two that ever existed, that were filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb. And that was the Lord Jesus who was conceived of the Holy Ghost and, of course, uh, John the Baptist. Now, often you'll hear people speak about the Immaculate Conception, and a lot of people get that confused. They think that that's the birth of Christ. No, the Catholics teach that Mary was conceived without <coughs> natural sin. But Mary herself said that wasn't true. So if Mary didn't believe it, I don't think we should either, right? And so... And now many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Well, turn in your Bibles to Malachi chapter 4. And in Malachi chapter 4, Verses 4 through 6, we read this. Remember you the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him, the Horeb, for all Israel with the statutes and the judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So now, a lot of people say, well, you folks believe that uh, John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. And uh, a lot of people believe that. Of course, Jewish people say, well, no, that's not true. So why do you people believe it? Well, there's a very, very good reason why we believe it. And that you find in Matthew chapter 11. If you go to Matthew chapter 11, we read verses 9 through 15. Now, the fellow speaking here knew exactly what he was talking about. And that was the Lord himself. And he said, But what went you out for to see? A prophet? Yes, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. <clears throat> he's speaking of John the Baptist. He's saying he's more than a prophet. In fact, of women... Uh, born of women, John was the greatest person that ever lived, and he was the only one besides Christ himself that were that came that was filled with the Holy Spirit while he was yet in the womb. But this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. He was referring to Malachi 3, 1, what we just read. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. 
And he's talking about that once you receive salvation and once you, you go to heaven, when you die, we become immortal. And so he's making a point that those in heaven are immortal. And John at this point was still in his fleshly body, is what he was referring to. But now John made his way to heaven. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violence taken by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive it, this is a lie which was come, which was for to come. He that had an ear, let him hear. So he was telling you that John the Baptist came, he fulfilled that prophecy of Elias coming. And then, going back to verse 18, And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. Now, what is Zacharias, he, uh, he has some spunk to, to say that to Gabriel. You know, I can just imagine uh, Gabriel here uh, changing his tone of voice a little bit. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. You know what that means to stand in the presence of God? If we stood in God's presence right now in the Chicago glory, we'd evaporate. And so he's telling you that who he is, he is a man of great, great stature, great power, and great authority. And he says this, And I have sent to speak to thee, and show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias, and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned it to them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of the administration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself for months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to take away my reproach amongst men. Well, going back to verse 20, it, it was not an uncommon thing in those days. Uh, if God did not want a people to, to know something, uh, if he wanted to keep knowledge from them, uh, then he would often say to the prophet, uh, I'm going to make you deaf and speechless. In fact, if you go to Ezekiel chapter 3, and in Ezekiel chapter 3, I want to just read you verses 25 to 27. And now, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make my, thy tongue to cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shall not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Well, there have been times when the Lord said, uh, <coughs> Don't pray for these people. You know, there comes a point where there's no turning back, and God says, I've given you the last chance, and now, now it's over with you. Now you're going to get my judgment. And he would tell the prophets, don't pray for them. Okay. Now, he, was, he dealt <coughs> very, very gingerly with Abraham. Okay. And uh, he was very patient with Abraham. But he was, that's not always the case. <laughs> And then in verse 25, Thus saith the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to take away my reproach and my will. In those days, if a woman couldn't conceive, uh, people felt that the reason she couldn't conceive was because she had sinned, a mighty sin, and uh, this was, was a, a great dishonor. Well, and they always thought that it was the woman's fault. They didn't realize, okay, uh, that it that could be the man's fault, okay, that she's not conceiving. And 
so there was quite a reproach on her. And if you remember, uh, well, go back. Let's go back to Ezekiel chapter three again. In Ezekiel chapter three, uh, verse twenty-two. Ezekiel, I mean Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 22. And God remembered Genesis 20, uh, verse, chapter 3, verse 22. No, chapter 30. But I'm in the, yeah, I got my, chapter 30, Genesis 30. Verse 22, I'll get it right. And God remembered Rachel. And God hearkened to her and opened her womb, and she conceived and bare a son, and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. Well, of course, you know, Joseph uh, was quite, quite a righteous man. And then going back to, to Luke 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. <coughs> now, that word there is all, okay? Um, there are those out there, the liberal theologians say, well, that, that word doesn't mean an actual virgin, but it means just a maid, okay, an unmarried woman. Well, no, it means virgin. It means a virgin, uh, and what's not Petula, okay? There's three different words, I think, for, and they all have three different meanings in the Hebrew. Well, actually, uh, yeah, in the Hebrew, but the Greek word uh, is the same as all of them. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Now think about that for a moment. Okay? God chose Mary. He looked upon her heart amongst all the women in the world. It was the dream of every Hebrew woman to be the one that would bring in the Messiah. Okay? Here is the one who is going to forgive the sins of the world okay? and bring peace to the earth. And here, here this angel appears to Mary and says, you're the one, okay? And she had to, I, well, just wonder what was going through her mind at the time, right? <clears throat> and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord <coughs> God. Now... I want you to turn over to 2 Samuel chapter 7. In the 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 through 17, you're seeing that that prophecy is going to be fulfilled, which was written here in 2 Samuel. And when the days be fulfilled, verse 12, chapter, chapter 7, verse 12, and when the days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with a rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. So you see that prophecy there fulfilled. And going back to, <coughs> to verse uh, 32. And shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and 
his kingdom there should be no end. So then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be? I mean, notice she, uh, she approaches Gabriel a little bit different than Zacharias. Okay? Zacharias, well, what did the Jewish people always say? Give me a sign. What sign? What sign? Okay? I want proof. And uh, what did Jesus say? Jesus said that there would be no sign that he was returning except for three days. Like Jonah was in the, the belly of the whale for three days, so should he be in the belly of the ground for three days and arise again. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. She's not asking for a sign, she's just asking a question. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, that would be that was the fulfillment of Genesis chapter 3, 15, where he said the seed of the woman will be at war, and his children, her children, will be at war with the seed of the serpent. Here's, well, a woman has no seed, so it was referring to that the conception by the Holy Spirit in Mary, that Mary would be uh, the seed, or Jesus would actually be the seed of the woman. So, and behold, my cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived in his, a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And that's what the Lord keeps telling you all through Scripture. He said, there's not even anything that's hard for him. Okay. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Well, Mary <coughs> knew better than to argue with the angel, didn't she? <laughs> And I mean, she had to be thinking, how in the world did I ever get me? Out of all the women that's ever been born, I'm the one. And many arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into the city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, here now you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in the babe in her womb, John the Baptist, in the Lord Jesus Christ, in Mary's womb. And now Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. How did she know? How did she know that Mary had conceived the Messiah? She didn't know. She lived 60 miles away. You know, 60 miles in those days uh, was a lot farther than 60 miles is today. You Listen, know, you got we travel just about that far to get over here sometimes. But not quite that far, but just think about that. In those days, that would take you several days, several days to travel 60 miles. And she spake with a loud voice, and blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Now, did you notice know what he said here? He said babe. He didn't say <clears throat> fetus, huh? Yeah. Right? Or, or product of conception. Amen. You know, it's hard to get people to use the term baby okay, uh, today, even those so-called pro-lifers will use the word fetus. Well, I'd like to have them go down to the grocery store and go into the aisle where it says fetus food. <laughs> you can look all around and you won't find, you find baby food, right? And then you go over there where, where they have uh, baby clothes, baby this and that. They don't use that word fetus, do they? No. All right. Well, we go on and and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be the performance of these things that were told her. For the Lord, in 
Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Now listen to this next verse. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Mm. Now remember what they said the Immaculate Conception was the, the birth of Conception of Mary. Mary was conceived without natural sin. That's not what Mary's saying. See, I tell you this, only a sinner needs a Savior. Right? Only a sinner needs a Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Well, you know, that's exactly what happened. Uh, if you go over to Luke chapter 11, <coughs> Luke chapter 11, 27 and 28. And it came to pass as he spoke these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the woman that bare thee in the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. And so what is he talking about? He's talking about, no, no, blessed are those that are obedient to the word of God and keep it because they will receive eternal life. You don't get eternal life from nursing a baby, okay? But that's what the Lord Jesus is saying here. He, he makes a, a big difference. He distinguishes between himself and the normal person. When they came to him and they said, your mother and your brothers are outside waiting for you. He tried to get the point across. Look, you know, I came here for that time. I became flesh. I did that part. But, folks, I'm not like the rest of you. Okay? It's a little different. I'm pre-existent. Uh, People refer to Mary as my mother, but I'm her creator. I existed long before Mary did. In fact, I existed long before any of you. I existed before the earth. He's pre-existed. And that was the point that he kept trying to get across, but he, he was doing it very gingerly. He didn't just lay it on him all one time. So he goes on to say, for he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. Well, see, <coughs> she's referring to the pre-existent Christ, who now has taken the form of a man, a child, in her womb. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and called them of low degree. He hath filled them, the hungry, with good things, and the rich hath he sent empty away. He hath opened his servant, Israel, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to the fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered. And she brought forth the son, and her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, No, not so, but he should be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And uh, and they made signs to the father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled. Now they had to say, What is going on here? This isn't, this isn't what we've done. This isn't our tradition. Uh, what, what is happening? Now remember, it had been 400 years since they had last heard from God. And they were under great Roman impression. That they, were, they were hoping to hear a word saying that that yoke of bondage will be lifted off of you. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt around about them, and all them sayings were noise abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up to their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost 
and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. And so, if you go over to Romans chapter 1, and read verses 1 through 4, we read this. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom ye are also the called of Jesus Christ. Going back to Luke chapter 1, verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform that mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy coming. Well, he will do that. He hasn't completed it yet, but he will do that when he comes when he comes back. You see that? Leave him out if you see him leave him to heaven. In, in Revelation chapter 19, with the saints returning back to earth in Zechariah 14. And like everything else that he said he would do, he had to, he will do it. Exactly the Exactly when, exactly where, and exactly how the Word of God has said. He's, he's right on schedule. The oath which we swear to our father, Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we bring, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, should be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sin. You know what? There was never a preacher to preach like John the Baptist. Okay. Uh, John the Baptist, when he preached, he preached heaven sweet and hell hot. And what well, I'm going to tell you, the world hates those kind of preachers. They just don't like them at all. <coughs> and so, that's why I made that song, Big Baptist John. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, and he was in the desert till the day of his showing into Israel. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. You know, you often will hear me <laughs> mention Bill O'Reilly, but in his books, you know, he wrote books about <coughs> killing everybody. And he says the reason that they crucified Jesus was because he owed back taxes. <coughs> now, if that's the case, you should go after Al Sharpton because he uh, he owes a lot. Okay, and you no, know, they didn't. They didn't go after Jesus for owing taxes. And all went to be taxed, every one into his, his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Well, actually, this is where they were just really try to send people back so they could take a census, and then after the census, then the taxing would take place. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him in the end. First of all, there was her firstborn son. And there are those that teach that, uh, that Mary was a continual version, that uh, she gave birth to Jesus and stayed a virgin. But that's not what the Bible teaches very clearly, that he had four brothers and at least two sisters, and that he was the oldest of the seven children. Well, there are those out there that teach that that wasn't really the case, that, that Joseph had been married 
previously to another woman, and she died, and, and uh, he had he had his children by her. The Bible doesn't say that at all. Mm -mm, nothing like that. Okay. And and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Now listen, pay close attention because a lot of people don't see what's going on here. <coughs> and I used to think that. I was probably the only guy out there that thought, well, wait a minute, when I'm, when I'm preaching here, this is a Christophany. And a Christophany is when the Lord Jesus appears in a human body, or a, the appearance of a human body. Or a Theophany is when he appears uh, as, as something else. He might appear as an angel of the Lord, okay? Uh, and you have a number of places in Scripture where it refers to the angel of the Lord. It's usually the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When he appeared to Abraham in the plains of Mamre as a man. When he appeared to Joshua uh, when he was standing next to the creek. And uh, Joshua said, are you with us or against us? And the Lord said, that's not the question. Are you with me? I'm the captain of the host. Okay. Uh, so here now, what we see, we see the Lord Jesus announcing his own birth as a human. You say, well, how in the world could he do that? Well, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things. Besides that, Christ is omnipotent, meaning all-powerful, omniscient, meaning all-knowledgeable. But he's omnipresent. Remember what David said? David said, where, where would I go to hide from thee? Could I, if I go to the bottom of the ocean, you're there. If I go to the depths of hell, you're there. If I go to the highest mountain, you're there. Okay? Uh, and the Bible said that God's eyes roam around the entire earth. There's nothing hidden from him. Okay? And so, we read, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. Now listen, how do you know that's the angel of the Lord? Well, listen. Wherever you have Shekinah glory, you have the presence of God. The Shekinah glory is only present when God is present. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were very sore afraid. Remember Paul on the road to Damascus, when the glory of the Lord there? <coughs> that shook them old boys up, all of them. Okay? Uh, you know, when something's so bright, when you can't, all you can see is just this bright, bright light, like staring into the sun. Okay? And so, he had, his glory was there shown around, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings, great joy, which shall be to all people. Now, I used to think that I was the only one that understood this, but then if you go back, because most of the modern teachers don't teach this, but if you go back and read the old commentaries, and boy, do I have some old commentaries, some that are a couple hundred years old. Uh, most all of the old theologians talk exactly what I'm telling you. And they come to the same conclusion the way that I did. I read the Bible. <laughs> it's right there. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to men. These angels were there praising God because he was there in their very presence. And it came to pass as the angels were going away from them unto heaven, the shepherds saw one to another, or said one to another, let us not go even into Bethlehem and see the thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told of them concerning the child. And all that they heard wondered, and those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Well, you know, we told you most of the perceptions, we went into a store and got a, a big picture of a nativity scene uh, for the Newberry Church. 
but the one we got is the only one that had just married Joseph and the babe and the major. The others had the, the three magi. And see, that's not reality. It's like the picture because when they did come, he wasn't in the major. When the magi came, he was in the house <coughs> and he was two years old already. And just like the pictures you see all the time of the Last Supper where you, you see Jesus with his hair down past his shoulders, he didn't have that. Okay, the Apostle Paul made it very clear. He says, doesn't even nature itself teach you that for a woman to have komea, in the Greek, long hair, it's for her covering. But for a man to have komea, then it would, it's a shame. And even nature tells you that, that a man has comb, okay, meaning man's hair, short hair, okay. Uh, and that means hair that's <coughs> above your shoulders, that doesn't go down past your shoulders. Now let me ask you all a question. Do you think if the Lord Jesus had long hair past his shoulders, Paul would have said such a thing? No. You know who had long hair past his shoulders in those days besides the women? It was the Sodomites. The Sodomites had long hair. And the, <coughs> the, the female prostitutes, they shaved their hair uh, to, show, to show that they were prostitutes. They served three years in the temple. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the, the saying which was told them concerning this child. And they all heard it, and all these things were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Well, you have to wonder what was going through her mind at that time. And the shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. And it was told unto them. Well, you know, they were just told by this angel of the Lord, the Savior is here. And remember, they were under tremendous impression, tremendous oppression. And they were saying, he's here, he's going to, you know, the, we'll be free again. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb, which meant salvation, salvation. Yahushua is the way it was pronounced. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses was accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Well. That would be only if you could not afford a lamb. If you could afford a lamb, then you would sacrifice a lamb. But turn over and uh, turn over in your Bibles to Isaiah, well, Lebe Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 12. Leviticus chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. And these were the laws concerning childbirth. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation of her infirmity, shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall not touch no hollow thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purification, or her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks as a separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. So it was twice as long for her purification if she'd had a, a little girl baby rather than a boy. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, uh, do you notice that? Son or daughter? See, back in those days, we just had boys and girls. We don't have all the critters we have nowadays, okay? Uh, we have transgenders and bigenders and who Lord knows what else, okay? But, uh, 
And when the days of her purify fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year of a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest, who shall offer it before the Lord, and make an atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law for her that hath born a male or a female. And if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles and two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement for her, and she shall be clean. And that's what they abide by, because they were under the law still. And Luke, uh, we're going back to Luke, uh, chapter 2, where we left off. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And he was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit unto the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. You know, a lot of times, folks, when you get older, and I think the Lord has made it that way, uh, if you've ever done much in the nursing homes, you find out that what a difference it is. When you go into the nursing home between people that are saved and those that are unsaved, you have these folks, and it's a pitiful, pitiful thing. Uh, when you have an old person on the verge of death, ready to, uh, to breathe their last, and they're afraid. They're scared to death of dying. They're scared to death of dying. And, but the people that are saved, and I think uh, when he does it that way as we get older, and we get all the aches and all the pains and all the things that come with age, but in our heart, you know, we know. Like my mother used to tell me all the time, would you leave me alone and let me die? All my friends are gone. I got nothing left here anymore. And I want to go home to be with Mama, you know. You know. And Mama would be about 100 years old right now. But, uh, and, and that's how we get as we get older like this. How many old people are here? <laughs> Sing together, 
you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and he hath redeemed Jerusalem. And the Lord hath made bare his holy arms in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from this. Touch no unclean thing, go ye out in the midst of her. Be you clean, and bear the vessels of the Lord, for ye shall not go out with haste, nor by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward. Amen. Amen. Going back to, to Luke chapter 2, which has prepared before us the face of all people, as a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Now you notice here, it says Joseph and his mother, because Joseph was his stepfather. Joseph, God was the father, the Holy Spirit was the father. Now in the New Age versions, they say his father and his mother. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. 